to, to attempt to, to catch blue cranes to fit satellite trackers onto. Um, and the idea with this project is to really try and understand um, how blue cranes use the landscape within the Western Cape. Um, get a glimpse into their daily lives, their, their local, very local daily movements. Um, from the point where they wake up at their roost sites through to when, where they feed, how they move through the day and then returning back to the roost sites. And the aim of this is to really try and look at um, how we can then feed into to development or conservation planning projects and be able to provide um, objective scientific input in ter terms of um, how uh, blue cranes as our national bird could be impacted on by developments like wind, farm, wind energy farms um, and associated power line and energy infrastructures um, associated with, with wind energy development. At the moment we, we don't really know how they move in this landscape and how they use it. Um, our colour ringing um, program that's been operating um, in partnership with Cape Nature and the Overberg Crane Group for the last um, 25 years or so has given us an idea of broad scale movements and, and how the blue cranes move at a a broad level um, through resightings of ringed individuals but the satellite tracking will allow us to to really look at how um, birds move daily um, through this western cape landscape the color ringing um, research that we've just completed um, the fitz um, percy fitzpatrick institute um, in partnership with ourselves and cape nature have um, analyzed the ringing resighting data um, for a master's project that has just been finished now and We've had some very interesting large-scale movements, um, particularly a, a Western Cape bird was resighted in, in Eastern Cape um, towards P Port Elizabeth area and we have had then sort of movements between the birds in the Overberg, so the area where we are right now, and into the Swartland region um, which is a lot drier um, and a lot more uh, newer range for, for blue cranes. We're seeing blue cranes moving into the Swartland area in, in more recent times. How does it work? So it's just a noose line. Each noose is a big loose nylon noose. Bird walks along, puts a foot in, and the noose tightens over its foot. It's a book. Yeah. And that's basically pegged in all around the feed trough. And they come in to feed and get their foot caught. The Western Cape holds by far the, the greatest number of blue cranes in South Africa. Um, we estimate more than half of South Africa's population is located in the Western Cape. We estimate probably around 17,000 birds um, uh, and this area is hugely important for our national bird but it's heavily reliant on agriculture and, and farming. Um, the birds use a completely transformed landscape um, from the previous Feinbos and Renorsterfeld that would have dominated this area. So their, um, the sustainability of this population is completely reliant on farmers um, and then people working together um, to, to ensure that um, the habitat that suits blue cranes here, which is particularly wheat and, and the pastures, um, you know, remains that way and, and, and farmers are, are cognizant of, of blue cranes and their farming operation. Within the, the wheat belt, it's one of the uh, most highly utilized areas within the Western Cape for agriculture. So the natural habitat, we've got roughly 4% of it remaining, which means that uh, most of the biodiversity is highly fragmented and um, under severe threat. So the conservation of species um, that are reliant on that, um, especially some of the avifaunal species that move across between the habitats becomes critical, which is uh, why the um, scientific understanding of movement patterns and things like that is, is so important. The, the farmers have uh, become very aware of the benefit of conservation uh, to the areas. In South Africa we've got over 80% of the biodiversity within the country actually sits within private landowners' hands, which means that uh, within this type of area the critically endangered um, habitat and of course the critically endangered species that are reliant on that habitat um, is all uh, within the hands of the, the farmers. Um, so we do a lot of work with them, they are the custodians of it, so they are the ones that uh, have ensured that we still have these uh, pockets of, of vegetation, um, pockets of, of uh, ecosystems in place. And um, there's a lot of pride uh, that the farmers have for the areas. So uh, we, we share our expertise from an environmental science perspective. Uh, we work hand in hand with the farmers um, to be able to ensure that uh, their legacy will be carried on to further generations. Mm -hmm. 
So do you think we're going to catch some blue cranes today? <laughs> <laughs> we better catch some blue cranes today. <laughs> uh, we were very lucky yesterday. We, we caught uh, our first three blue cranes yesterday and, and the, the deployment went very well. Um, after horrendous weather in the morning, um, it, it cleared up and, and today we, we blessed with a beautiful day. So um, we should catch, but when, when it comes to animals, you never know. Mm. <laughs> so we might be here a while, but at least we got lots of coffee. So. Yes. <laughs>